not next. So I said, inflation is, a, is defined as a sustained general rise in prices across the economy. So when there is continuous rise in the prices of goods, of services, and the economy, that's inflation. Then the opposite of inflation is deflation. So what is deflation? A persistent fall in the prices of goods and services. Then we have disinflation. This is, the, this is defined as a fall in the rate of inflation. So when the rate of inflation falls, maybe from 4% to 2%, that is disinflation. Is it clear? Yeah. Then we have hyperinflation. This describes a situation where the inflation levels are very high. So a very high inflation rate, mm -hmm. above 5%, 7%, 8%, that's hyperinflation. Even up to 50%. So what are the causes of inflation? One, demand pull inflation. When we talk about demand pull inflation, this is inflation that occurs as a result of increase in aggregate demand in an economy. So yeah, I wrote, this is caused by excess demand in the economy, which is the same as increase in aggregate demand. When there is too much demand, the price level or average level of prices in the economy rises when there's too much demand. So what are the causes of excessive increase in aggregate demand? Number one, low interest rate which means borrowing becomes cheap. When there's, are you with me, please? Yeah. When there's low interest rate in the economy, it means people will be able to borrow so much. Then interest rate, interest rate is cheap, then borrowing will become cheaper. This will result to people wanting to buy more. It increases the purchasing power of people. So consumer spending will increase, and this will lead to aggregate demand increase. Do you understand? So an increase in aggregate demand will, will increase the price level of goods in the economy leading to demand pool inflation. Two, firms may respond to large increase in the demand by investing more. So firms also will increase their demand, will increase their investment, probably because the demand in an economy has increased. So to meet up with this demand, they need to produce more. So they will, they will invest more in production, which also will lead to inflation. Three, the government could be cutting taxes. So government can reduce tax. If government reduce taxes, it means prices will fall in that economy, increasing spending. As a result of that, the aggregate demand will increase in the economy, mm -hmm. leading to inflation. The last one, world demand for, for, world demand for that country's exports may be rising because of a boom in the world economy. In, our, in this country, the demand for exports might increase. And if the demand for exports increases, it increases the prices of goods, leading to inflation. Is it clear? Yes. Then we go to cost push inflation. For cost push inflation, this inflation is the result is as a result of changes in the supply side of the economy. So these occurs basically when the cost of production rises. So when the cost of production rises, it could lead to cost push inflation. So what are the sources of cost push inflation? Number one, increase in wages and salaries. So if wages and salaries of firms increases, it increases their cost of production. Because wages and salaries are part of the expenses of the firms. And if this increases, it increases their cost, which means they might need to transfer or push it to, to prices. Then prices will rise, leading to inflation. Two, high import prices. If importation of goods increases, if the price of imports increases in the economy, it makes prices of domestic products rise. So maybe you need to buy raw materials from abroad. And the price of raw materials, bring it down, bringing them down here, rises. It means whatever price you want to sell will increase. So importation, high cost of importation, will increase the domestic prices. Do you get it? Leading to inflation. Three, inelastic demand for products. So if the demand for your product is price inelastic, it means you can charge any, any price, then it could lead to inflation because no consumers are, not, are still going to buy. Last one, increase in indirect taxes. If government increases indirect taxes, then consumers will need to pay more and firms will have to do what? To charge more. Yeah. So that's, these are the reasons why there's cost push inflation. Then the graph analysis for demand pool inflation. If aggregate demand increases, that means from AD1 to AD2, the prices will rise from P1 to P uh, from P1 to P2. Yes. Do you understand? If aggregate demand increases yes. from AD1 to AD2, mm -hmm. then the demand uh, the price will rise from P1 to P2. Okay. 
for cost push inflation. If the short run, uh, if the short run aggregate supply move upward from as a, a short run aggregate supply one to short run aggregate supply two, prices will also move from P one to P two. Do you understand? Yes. So, what are the costs of high inflation? What are the problems of high inflation rates? One, growth and employment. Number one, growth and unemployment. Inflation disrupts patterns of spending, which firms will we have to by reducing output, which may lead to lower economic growth or falling GDP. Inflation will increase, will disrupt how we spend because there's increase in inflation. There's increase in prices of goods and services. So we would reduce our spending. As a result of that, we won't be able to spend more. Then firms would also what, have to readjust because people are not buying, consumers are not buying. So they have to readjust. And when they are readjusting their output, it means they might need to lay off workers, leading to unemployment. Is it clear? Yes. Two, competitiveness. High inflation will make a country's export less competitive and imports more competitive. This will lead to balance of trade deficit. With high inflation rates, prices of domestic prices will rise, making our exports to become less competitive. Mm -hmm. As a result of that, we need more imports. Our balance, of payment, our balance of trade will become deficit. That's another problem. We'll become less competitive in the international market because the prices are high. Because our, our, imp, our export, who we export to, we start checking for alternatives. They wouldn't want to buy from us anymore. Is it clear? Yes. We distribution our costs. Government may have to readjust taxes and spending. So, government will need to readjust taxes and spending because inflation rate has increased in that economy. If government does, do not we are just spending on taxes, then the economy will decline. Psychological and political cost. Price increases are deeply unpopular. People think they are worse off, even if their income rises, and this disturbs social order greatly. What we're talking is this. If there's inflation rates, even if you are, in, you are earning so much, you will still believe that you are worse off. You believe that you are spending so much. Even if, you're in, if you're in, uh, your wages increases or your income increases. So psychologically, you feel like you are spending too much. You wouldn't have spent so much. Despite the fact that you are, in, you have, you are earning more, you still be having that thought that you are spending more. Mm -hmm. Do you understand? Because it's inflation. Five, menu costs. If there's inflation, the restaurants have to change their menus to show increased prices. Shops have to change their price levels. And these are costs too. You need to, if there's in, continuous increase in the prices of goods and services, you have to continue change continuously change your price tags. And these are materials waste. So that's an increase in cost. That's what we call menu cost. You have to change your price tags to meet up with the inflation rate in the economy. Now we go to cost of deflation. What are the consequences of deflation? Number one, low confidence level. Consumers are concerned about the future and know that if they do not buy today, they might be able to buy at a cheaper price tomorrow. If prices continue to fall, consumers will not want to buy now because they know the prices will fall later. So this will lead to what? A fall in aggregate supply, an aggregate demand. And the fall in aggregate demand will lead to low economic growth. How? When the demand in an economy falls, firms will not be, they won't have the incentive to produce more. Then I, that means aggregate demand has fallen. Mm -hmm. As a result of that, firms will start producing less. Then output will become low in that economy. Low economic growth. Mm -hmm. The third one, cyclical unemployment. If there, is low, if there is reduction in aggregate demand in the economy, it will lead to the unemployment cyclical. Do you understand? Yeah. Okay. So what are the benefits of low inflation? Remember, low inflation means a fall in the rate of inflation, which is basically for 2%. So the normal inflation rate should be 2%. Are you with me? Yes, sir. So if inflation rate is 2%, is at 2%, what happens? One, it increases the output of firms, which may increase the economic growth. So firms will be willing to produce more. They have the incentive to produce more because they will make profit. So this will lead to economic growth. Mm -hmm. Two, it decreases aggregate demand in the economy, leading to increase in employment rate. 
aggregate demand will increase because the prices are still affordable for consumers, leading to unemployment, or leading to increase in unemployment, increase in employment rate. Three, it encourages borrowing as borrowers will be able to invest to repay back their debts. If prices are inflation rate is at two percent, firms or borrowers, uh, people that wants to borrow, they will feel like they can borrow because they know they're going to make profit. And when they make profit, they will be able to return back, return or repay back their loans or debts. Yeah. So they will be willing to borrow because they know when they when they borrow, they invest. They will be able to make returns on their investment. Is it clear? Yeah. So these are some terminologies you need to know about inflation. One, anticipated inflation. When you talk about anticipated inflation, it means that economic agents or actors are able to predict an increase in price accurately. That is anticipated inflation. Then we have unanticipated inflation. Here, consumers and firms are unable to predict the inflation rate, basically because they got poor information. Is it clear? Then we have indexation. What is indexation? Indexation means that you have readjusted your variables, like wages and interest rates, in line with inflation rate. That's indexation. Readjusting variables, yeah. such as wages and interest rates, in line with inflation rate. Do you have any questions? Yeah.